The story begins with a murder scene where a dictator named Hilda van der Kooi is killing her own citizens, but there is a little boy who survived the massacre, and of course he is boy. Since surviving the murder, he lives with a man known as Shaman. Unfortunately, the country is ruled by a cruel dictator like Hilda. Feeling bored with this situation, Shaman helped Boy to take revenge on the dictator, and of course he would train him to become the strongest fighter in the world. Therefore, he began to accustom Boy to extreme training ranging from telling him to eat anything to training in a forest environment. It turned out that Boy was deaf and cold here due to Hilda's torture. Inevitably, he also had to be able to read lips when communicating. One day, he suddenly hallucinated and saw the figure of his dead sister, and instantly he recalled his bleak childhood memories. Where at that time he and his sister suffered from the cruel Van der Kooi dynasty. With the country in chaos, Boy and his sister once dreamed of getting out of the country. Then look for a safe place from greedy people. But as little kid they could only dream, while the only way they could escape from reality was by playing games. After Boy experienced hallucinations, the shaman decided to cure him so that his consciousness wouldn't be disturbed. Since being given a spell by the master, Boy no longer hallucinates and has become more enthusiastic in practicing. Shaman was even convinced that he would become the weapon of destruction to Van der Kooi families. 25 years later, Boy is now a young man who is an expert in fisticuffs, having mastered dozens of martial arts moves taught by Shaman. However, unfortunately, he is again haunted by the shadow of his sister, which makes him often off guard. As a result, he was asked to meditate regularly to avoid being haunted again. But it seems that this method has not succeeded in curing the disease. One day, Boy went to the market to buy something. There he saw a beautiful white woman and attracted her. However, it wasn't long before Van der Kooi's troops came to inspect, and strangely the white woman praised the authoritarian government. Boy was immediately furious, because for him they were greedy people who took away happiness from others. Not wanting to be caught, Boy and Shaman hid behind the crowd. Here he saw Hilda's older brother, Gideon van der Kooi. He was the one who had caught his family. Boy couldn't take revenge now because the situation was impossible, especially since Gideon was bringing troops. On that day, they came to take 12 poor people to the Van der Kooi family headquarters, where every year they held a show called Culling. At the event, the Van der Kooi family would kill poor people in front of their invited guests and broadcast it on television. Apart from the poor, these dictators also targeted blacks, Latinos, and Asians. The Van der Kooi family didn't want to be called racist and said that they carried out the massacre for the sake of world balance. When Van der Kooi's subordinates were selecting targets, there was a woman who defied their orders. She even dared to say that Glenn was just a puppet controlled by the Van der Kooi family. This Glenn Van der Kooi was angry and out of control. However, Glenn shot the wrong person, scaring the other people. In addition, there were also some people who took advantage of this situation to rebel. As a result, their anger became even more intense until a black people desperately wanted to slash her. However, suddenly the person's hand was cut off. It turns out that this helmeted woman is Hilda's only daughter named June. Not only that, she also served as military commander in the Van der Kooi dynasty. And in this chaotic situation, she was forced to kill all the rebels. On the other hand, Boy actually wanted to help the people, but Shaman forbade him because he wasn't ready to fight Gideon and his subordinates. As a result, he could only hold back and was no choice to witness the mass murder. After killing all the rebels, Glenn proposed to bring the children to the calling event, event under 12 people. However, the proposal was immediately rejected by June, who had the principle of not harming the elderly and children. When Van der Kooi's group want to leave, Boy was desperate to follow them even though the shaman didn't allow it. Arriving at Hilda's headquarters, Boy got out of the trunk secretly, then hid behind a pile of stuff. It turned out that the place wasn't the main headquarters, but a government armory. There were many lower-class workers who were forced to assemble weapons without being paid a penny. Not long after, a woman approached Gideon and Glenn. She was Glenn's wife and Hilda's youngest sister, Melanie van der Kooi. And as a member of the van der Kooi family, of course she has the same high position as Gideon.
where she was assigned as the person in charge of the calling event. At the same time, Boy tried to find out what was being said, but the distance was too far to read their lips. While he was focusing, his sister suddenly come up again. Even this time, his sister talked to him like a living person. And slowly, Boy couldn't distinguish between what was real and what was hallucination. As a result, he became unfocused, until he was finally caught by Glenn and his troops. As a result, Boy was no choice to be brutalized. In the middle of the struggle, a worker named Basho gave Boy a weapon. And in return, he asked for help, so that Boy would release the chains on his legs. Here, it was finally revealed that all the employees were forced to work continuously by chaining their legs. Once he was free of the chains, Basho promised to help him. Without much more talk, Boy was back in action. Because of the knowledge taught by the shaman, he was finally able to eliminate dozens of Vanter Koi soldiers by himself. At this point, Boy recalled his teacher's message that he would make it the most powerful weapon of mass destruction on Earth. And on this night, Shaman's words were truly proven. Later, Basho shoots Glenn in the leg to prevent him from running away. After that, he helps Boy to interrogate Glenn and threatens to finish him if he doesn't open his mouth. Fearing that he would be killed, Glenn said that Hilda and her family would be having a big party at the palace. So, if he wanted to kill her, then Boy had to infiltrate the party. And to get there, he needed a clue from Glenn. But suddenly, Basho accidentally killed him. Because of Basho's careless behavior, they now have to find another way to infiltrate Hilda's palace. Feeling guilty, Basho takes Boy to a place in the slums area, where this place is the headquarters of the rebel army. As it turns out, he was the one who formed the army. So the story goes, he was an immigrant from Japan when the world went through a massive crisis. When he saw the injustice of the Van der Koy dynasty, he decided to form a resistance and rebellion group. After walking for a long time, they finally arrived at their destination. There, they were welcomed by Basho's best friend Benny, a rebel whose family was killed out just because being black. Without much ado, Basho asked him to gather the troops as quickly as possible in order to raid Hilda's palace. Unfortunately, all their troops had been slaughtered a month ago. Hearing the news, Basho was devastated. After venting his grief, he was determined to kill the Van der Koy family and their minions without exception. However, to make that happen, he needed boy helps, who could definitely do it. Moreover, he also has a grudge against the oppressive family. Without thinking, Boy immediately accepted Basho's invitation. And to shorten the time, they immediately made plans to infiltrate Hilda's palace. Long story short, the three of them finally arrived at Hilda's palace. Here, Boy disguised himself as a chef. Meanwhile, Basho and Benny pretended to be bodyguard soldiers. But since Boy didn't really understand their complicated plan, he chose to wait for instructions first. Before the mission begins, his little late sister, again, came up and makes his focus become divided. And this time the boy took his sister to eat a cake that boy had never tasted in his life. While eating, he saw a woman in the distance, and it turns out that the woman is Hilda van der Koy. At first, he tried to restrain himself, but a huge feeling of resentment pushed him to go on a rampage right there. Unfortunately, the person he had just beheaded wasn't the dictator but someone hired to pretend to be Hilda. Not long after, Gideon showed up with his gun drawn. Apparently, Gideon had been waiting for Boy's arrival after getting news of Glenn's death. Feeling trapped, Boy immediately turned the situation around and pointed his gun at Gideon's head. But unfortunately, June suddenly attacked him from behind. Because of this fight, June's helmet was exposed. Unfortunately, this woman is not an ordinary woman who is often considered weak. This is because, in a matter of seconds, she was able to get up and turn things around. In fact, she was able to knock Boy down from the floor above. Before he lost consciousness, Boy suddenly remembered the flashback of when his family was killed and when Shaman saved him from death. Not long after, Boy woke up bound in a very dark room. Here June already knew that he was Shaman's student who was trained to be weapon to make Van Der Koy's dynasty destruction. After that, Gideon told June to come out because she wanted to talk one-on-one -on -one with Boy. In a point, she claimed to be the supreme leader of the Van der Koy dynasty, replacing Hilda, who was taking refuge in a bunker. 
According to rumors, the ruthless dictator was scared and wanted to take refuge from his enemies. And unexpectedly, the enemy was Shaman. Still don't know what happened between the two of them, but Shaman is a very scary figure for Hilda and her family. Then, Gideon wants Boy to tell him where the Shaman is hiding. That way, the Van der Kooi family would send troops to finish him off. However, Boy didn't care about the ramblings, it's making Gideon furious. As Gideon failed to force Boy, the interrogation was eventually taken over by Milani. Without further ado, she immediately blamed Boy for Glenn's death, which made her a lot of stress. Strangely, she was stressed not because her husband died, but because Glenn was the best host on The Calling Show. So, she's afraid that the show is in danger of losing viewers this time. So instead, she will make Boy one of the targets to be tortured and killed on the show. In addition to bringing Boy, she also intends to invite Hilda to the calling event to drastically increase ratings. Moreover, the dictator hasn't greeted her loyal followers for a long time. Even though the woman's mental condition is still unstable. However, Melanie will do anything for get high ratings. Then she told June to handcuff and put an electric collar around Boy's neck so he couldn't escape. After it was installed, Boy was visited by his sister again. Here he looks upset because of his sister who always makes his problems more complicated. In fact, he did all this to avenge her death. Long story short, the calling event was officially opened. Then with pride, the MC immediately invited Hilda to the stage. As Gideon had said, Hilda didn't look as vile as she used to. On this stage, she looked anxious, nervous, and scared. In fact, she had to read the text to make her speech go smoothly. Then in the middle of the show, she saw Boy's figure, which immediately reminded her of the shaman. After that, she immediately hallucinated seeing the figure of the shaman in the middle of the audience. As a result, she was upset and almost killed everyone. Not wanting the show to fail miserably, Melanie immediately took over to calm down the audience. Without wasting any more time, she finally started this event with the theater performance. At this point, Boy couldn't understand why people would consider a massacre as entertainment. In fact, they applauded as the targets began to be eliminated. As a human being who still has a conscience, Boy decides to help the people who are being used as sacrifices. But unfortunately, Melanie has activated the electric collar around his neck, so he can't do anything. And in the end, the executors want to kill him right away. Not long after, there was an executioner in a goat costume who was ordered to crack Boy's head. However, suddenly he didn't kill him. Unexpectedly, it turned out that the executioner was Basho. So, when Boy was caught by Gideon, he and Benny killed two Van Der Kooi soldiers, then cut off their legs as access to the performance space. In addition, they had also prepared a homemade gun for Boy, so they could brutalize in a crowd. Without wasting any more time, the three of them immediately attacked. Melanie, on the other hand, looked furious as she watched her show fall apart. Meanwhile, Gideon was amused by the actions of Boy and his friends. As it turns out, he was the one who gave Boy the knife, so he could remove the handcuffs. Apparently, he feels jealous of Hilda and Melanie, who are very dominant in the Van der Kooi dynasty. Moreover, these two younger siblings are women, while he, who is the first child, wasn't chosen as the highest leader. Hearing her brother's confession, Melanie felt very betrayed. While the two siblings were arguing, Boy and his friends became increasingly wild and invincible. However, the Van der Kooi family brought out their strongest executioners to defeat the shaman student. After killing all of Van der Kooi's executioners, Boy looked at his sister who looked scared. It seemed like his sister didn't expect that her brother could be so brutal. When Boy was caught off guard, Melanie came with a shotgun and shot Benny. Seeing the dead Benny and the wounded Basho, Boy immediately grabbed Melanie and tied her to a chair. He then places her in front of the camera to let everyone know that Van der Kooi's reign is coming to an end. After that, Boy killed her. Before continuing the action, he and Basho paid homage to Benny first. Then Basho followed Boy to the bunker area to meet Hilda. But because he was badly wounded, he couldn't continue his journey and could only pray for him. With determination, Boy faced Van der Kooi's entire army. 
In an instant, he was able to eliminate hundreds of soldiers without a single person left. Actually, Boy intended to treat Basho after this, but unfortunately, he was already lifeless. On the way to the bunker, he saw Gideon who was already helpless. Apparently, he had been shot by Melanie for betrayal. Before he breathed his last, Gideon gave his ID card to Boy so that he could enter the bunker and finish Hilda off. After all, he hated his sister too much. Despite his help, Boy couldn't forgive Gideon's crimes. But just as he wanted to cut off Gideon's head, Boy was stopped by his sister. His sister then asked him to forgive Gideon for helping him. Not wanting to be fooled by illusions anymore, Boy immediately sent her away because the figure wasn't real and could make him weak. Then instantly the younger sister's illusion disappeared without a trace. Because there was no one to prevent him anymore, Boy could finally kill Gideon freely. With Gideon dead, Hilda was the only one who had to pay the avenge. Wasting no time, Boy used Gideon's ID card to access the entrance to the bunker. Not long after, Hilda sent June and her troops to pick up Boy. Here she didn't kill him immediately because she wanted to tell him a secret first. Arriving at the bunker, Boy saw the Van der Koy elders relaxing on a soft sofa. Then he saw the photos displayed in the room. And at the same time, he heard the shaman's voice and very strange mantras. When Boy was confused, Hilda came and immediately hugged him while saying that she was his biological mother. Suddenly, Boy was shocked beyond belief. It turns out that all this time he had been manipulated by the shaman to kill his own mother. Not only that, the shaman was also the one who made him deaf by cutting his tongue and sticking a hot iron to damage his eardrums. Slowly, Boy's original memory began to return fully which made him remember the events of 25 years ago. At that time, Hilda's troops caught the shaman's family to be eliminated, because the shaman was a rebel soldier who had killed Boy's biological father. Therefore, Hilda ordered Boy, who was still a kid, to kill the shaman and his family. Although he refuses, Hilda continues to force him, because she will be the heir to the throne in the Van der Koy family. As a result, he had no other choice. However, the shots only hit Shaman's children and wife, so Hilda told Boy to fire the last shot. Feeling fed up, Boy opened fire on his mother's troops and fled to the forest to calm down. There he met the Shaman who had escaped. Initially, Shaman wanted to finish him off, but he chose to use Boy as a tool of revenge. After Boy realized everything, Hilda also told him one fact. June was Boy's biological sister. And all this time, she has been looking for Boy throughout Africa so that they can reunite. Here, Hilda uses this moment to invite her eldest son into the dynasty. But as someone who still has a heart, Boy flatly refuses. Feeling disrespected, the dictator finally ordered June to finish off her own brother. And because she had been brainwashed, he immediately beat Boy severely. But just as she wanted to execute him, Boy made a hand gesture that reminded June of their childhood. When they were kids, they both hated Hilda and often mocked her with that gesture. Seeing that, June finally changed her mind and killed Hilda. Elder van der Koy didn't just silent, and then mobilized the entire army to finish off Boy and June. With their fighting skills, the two of them had no trouble overcoming the troops. After eliminating all of van der Koy's troops, June and Boy can finally breathe a sigh of relief. From now on, both of them can realize their childhood dream of living freely like in the game by getting out of the place. But unfortunately, fate said otherwise as they had to deal with the shaman who was waiting on the ground floor. Here, Boy looks disappointed and feels that he is only being used by shaman, even though he already considers shaman as his own father. On the other hand, shaman says in sign language that a revenge will definitely have consequences. And now he invites Boy and June to take revenge on him. Without further ado, June attacked him right away. Seeing his sister overwhelmed, Boy finally intervened in this fight. Although the shaman only wore simple clothes, he was able to damage June's helmet and armor. While his sister was dying, Boy continued to beat shaman with all the energy he had left and was determined to fight until the end. Despite being overwhelmed, Boy was still able to kill shaman and in the end, he managed to complete his revenge. After all this chaos, Boy invited his younger sister to move to another country and turn over a new chapter of their life.
And then the movie ended.